Hi, welcome to Sammy's Cottage Kitchen. You've just tuned into Access and into my show. We're not in the kitchen, we're out on the deck because we're barbecuing. I did grilling another day and uh, I asked you, do you know what the difference between grilling and barbecuing is? And I don't think there's anybody can say that. So we're just gonna say when it's grilling, it's fancy, er, and when it's barbecuing, it's just down to earth. I've got a trusty assistant with me today. He's not playing the guitar right now because I got him on the <coughs> island. And he's going to be doing some chopping and dicing and slicing. Jack? Um, you're trying to slice my fingers, I guess. <laughs> no, please keep <laughs> your fingers out of the way. Those are guitar playing fingers. I know, I know. I need those things. Okay, uh, good idea, good idea. And later on, we will pick and sing a couple of tunes for you. But first, we've got to get the meat happening. Today, <coughs> I'm going to be doing uh, uh, ribs. You'll see here, I've got a nice, beautiful piece of ribs. There's very, very, very few people who don't like ribs. Very important though that you know how to marinate them and how to pre-cook them so that they are not raw when you serve it to people and so that they fall off the bones and also that they've got a savory taste. So over here, um, by the way, is Jack Hollenberg and he's my guitar player, husband, Partner in crime for a lot of years. And trusty assistant That's or something. True. Something. Or untrusty assistant. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of history which we'll tell you about as we're cooking. You don't want to know this. The stories, <laughs> they don't have enough time we're, on we're this station to the capture all that. We won't, thing. we won't be telling road stories. We'll just be telling, you know, things that yeah, yeah. are TV friendly, I think. Anyway, never mind. Musicians. We have a lot of fun in our lives. We're still having a lot of fun in our lives. We've been playing music together for... 36 years, 30, oh something like that, a lot of years. Oh my God, I just dated us. <laughs> I'm a young guy. Now what I'd like you to do for me first. What would you like to uh, do? Is to fix up the, the um, garlic. garlic. I'm going to need some garlic for putting on here. Kay. But what I'm gonna do. Two toes of garlic. Is two right toes of garlic. I'm gonna squash them and put them onto this to marinade. I'm going to turn the barbecue on really low. Well, I'll put it on high first for it to light. Because you're going to need to put the meat into foil and put it on the top rack and let it pre-cook before you put it onto the grill to do the grilling. If you put it on the grill right away, it's going to burn. And I don't want that. Again, I want to bring to attention that I like using avocado oil. I like to let people know that that's something very available to you in any grocery store. It's the best cooking oil you can use. That's going to be argued because people will say, what about olive oil? Olive oil is awesome. As long as you're only doing low heat cooking or using it for marinades or for uh, salads, because it's very good for your health, for your heart. It's heart smart. But when it gets too high, too high of a temperature, it breaks down and be turns into trans fat, and then it's not heart smart. Now, what I'd like you to do, Jack, while I'm preparing the meat, you have a knife, right? You're just going to cut that off first, yeah. and he's you going to show you how, piece. no, just the very ends, just about an inch. Yeah, I know. And then uh, you're going to peel down that last piece of the thick ones so we don't lose it. And then you're going to cut them into, I don't know, about one, one and a half inch pieces because I never told you we're making ribs, but we're also making a basket of grilled veggies. Now, I'm just going to turn this right down because I just need that to be on low. Now I'm going to take a little bit of avocado oil, just to oil the meat so that it doesn't stick to the foil because it's going to be in foil when it's on top and doing its slow cooking and simmering. Very important to put all the right flavors. So of course I've got the garlic. We have a lot of mosquitoes visiting, Jack. Yeah, I noticed. The heck. Well, I guess that's barbecue life in, in Canada. What am I saying? That's a part of it. You just learn how to just make sure you have some mosquito repellents or those little coils that you can burn so that your guests don't get all chewed up. Now what we're doing is the pre-prep before, you know, your guests would be ready to arrive. And it's important to kind of have things pre-done. This is a nice old garlic masher smasher also. 
Who would that belong to? Did you buy that for your mom when you were a kid? Well, my mom had it. I don't think I bought it for no? her now. No? Oh, I think I told that story once. Oh, you lied. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to. Anyway, so now you're going to take this because it's important that you rub the oils, the garlic, into it. Garlic and rosemary go together beautifully. So that's going to be the main combination here. I always like using a little bit of Herbes de Provence, too. This is my cloth for my hands because um, I don't want everything dirty. I also have a little bit of roasted garlic that I could use, but instead I used the, the real garlic. So Herbes de Provence is really the herbs of the province, and we are in Saskatchewan, so it's the herbs of Saskatchewan, and it's not dandelions. I guess you can use that. I heard, what was the latest thing I heard? Some, uh, the, the portulaca weed is supposed to be good for you, and you're supposed to put it in salad. I haven't quite got that far yet. I have to research that one a little further. Although I have enough of that in my garden. You want uh, to these the neighborhood. in About, a bowl? Yeah, in a bowl. Just because it's all going to go together in the vegetable basket. Okay. I'm going to now. I wanted to say what Herbes de Provence was. It's whatever you want to mix for your favorite herbs. Mine is a little bit of rosemary, thyme, sage, and oregano. What did I miss? Rosemary? Anyway, and I'm going to put a little extra rosemary on here. I don't have the fresh rosemary right now, but what I do have sitting over here on my sill. You want the turnip next or the... Yeah, do the turnip up, please, because uh, I'm going to have to get that on the... I've got to parboil <coughs> the root vegetables. I've got a little bit of oregano here. I'm going to put that also on. And what else have I got? Greek oregano and Italian oregano. Well, what kind of competition is that? But I'm going to put a little bit out in that because that's going to really make a difference in the flavors. Also going to need some cracked pepper. Have to fly over here and find that. And I'm also going to need just a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Again, that's a tenderizer, but it's also very flavorful. I never add salt. You should never add salt to the meat. When you're preparing it, this is a very important tip. It sucks the moisture out of the meat. If you want to add salt, you add salt later. And besides, salt is a very individual, you know, uh, desire. People have to know what they want for the salt. Okay, so now I've got this seasoned with everything that it needs to be seasoned with. And I'm going to get a, a large piece of foil. And the little bit of oil is good because it, it'll help I think I said it before, it won't stick. Good, generous piece of heavy duty foil. Always put the shiny piece to the inside because if you put it to the outside, it repels the heat. So, put it face down like that. Now I have a little bit of garlic and herbs and everything in the pan here and I'm just going to rub it on the back side of the meat so you don't waste anything but it's all going to infuse anyway because it's going to be on the in the foil how are you doing there my trusty oh, just, chopper dicer slicer just chopping away here <laughs> well you know we have had a lot of fun in the doing music making music together that's how we doing met. catering. Well, the catering, that's what I wanted catering. to say to you. Does this bring back just a couple of memories? That's where I didn't get to do these things. I was mostly doing the dishes. I was the dish pig, right? <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Not necessarily a good thing. Going to put this in the top of the barbecue. You see that? And I've got it on very low because it has to do a pre-cook. And later on, I'll turn it all up. I have to clean up my little bit of a meat mess here. I didn't make much of a meat mess, actually, because I was on top of a... I was on top of the cookie sheet, I believe. Now, there's a reason why he's doing this. What I want to make is a basket like this of vegetables. But when you're making root vegetables together with peppers, and asparagus and onions and oh you'll have to run to the fridge for the mushrooms because that's what I forgot to get. I will go. Um, they only take a few minutes to cook. 
So if you put that all in the basket at the same time, it wouldn't work. So I take the carrots, some rutabaga, and some baby potatoes, it's a nice thing, and you parboil them. But you can't parboil them all together. So I've already done a parboil, because I've only got one burner, on some of the baby potatoes and the carrots. See? Beautiful colors. And you know the baby potatoes now, you get nice, funny colored purple ones and everything. So I've pre-parboiled those, and now they're chilled down. And I'm gonna grab the rutabagas from you right now and get them on the flame. Oh, is there, I got water here. Mushrooms? I need the mushrooms, yeah, please. And it doesn't hurt to get these on right away. He's my runner, my guitar player, <coughs> my house builder, my kitchen builder. I think I gotta keep him. I waited till he left the room and said all that. Maybe I better say it when he comes back. All right, water in. Rutabagas on. Oh, I call them rutabagas, and you know that throws people for a loop, because that is the official term. But most people out here in the countryside, I've noticed, call them turnips. Technically, the turnips are the white ones with the purple top. And these are like the, what, what color would you call that? Kind of golden colored with the purpley top, and that's officially called the rutabaga. So now you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put this back to the side. Now I'm going to put together a barbecue sauce because I'm going to need that. What Thanks. do you need I next? need those, I need those halved. All of them? Uh, no, about half of those. Please, and just put them in a bowl. Actually, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show off a little bit. <laughs> no, I wanna show, I wanna show people what you do when you wanna cook, uh, when you wanna cut. This is knife skills again. I'm trying to show people how to watch out for their fingers. If you want to show how you can cut mushrooms in a hurry now, you're just cutting them in half. But if you want to really do a quick slice, you put your knuckles again against the knife like that. And you just... And you get a really, really fast. Now I'm wasting mushrooms. But that's what I wanted to show off. Well, you don't have to do that. I was just saying to... Good, because I'd be losing my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying to everybody that you're my slicer, dicer, uh, builder, guitar player, all-around good guy, and I'm, I'm happy to have you. Jack of all trades, master of none, right? That's the one. There you go. <laughs> but does it keep our life interesting? Yes. Well, it's fun. <laughs> I can tell stories about when we were... We lived in Okotoks before we came here. And uh, I had my own catering company for 11 years. And we catered for very large parties, everything from between 100 to 400. And Jack was always there. Yes, you did dicing and slicing. And you were the carrot peeler. Do you remember <laughs> that? He was the peeler. Bags like this. Oh. And potatoes, bags like that. Peeler. Oh. And we would sit actually together, the awesome. two of us, usually the night before. Those we'd were the enjoyable parts. <laughs> The day before the catering, we sit down and peel potatoes um, for a day, and carrots, and onions, <laughs> and whatever. And just, just get it all pre-prepared. People have no idea how... I'm, my hat's off to anybody who's caterers because it's crazy. You have to be a particular person. When I was in chef school, they said that. They Is that said enough you, mushrooms for you? Uh, yeah. You have to be of a particular way of thinking in order to be a caterer because it's a high-paced, heavy-duty type job. You have to, first of all, shop to get everything you need, and then, oh, you'd better have it together because now you've got to start at 4 in the morning or 5 in the morning, start cooking, doing whatever you're doing, and be ready to serve it by 6. And then we did crazier, didn't we? And we were done with the, with the catering. Yeah, and then we would go play for four hours. Yeah, I would change my hat, and usually my hair was such a disaster by that time because I had a chef's hat on. I just went from a chef's hat to a cowgirl hat. What do you uh, need next year? Onions? Uh, not, no, peppers. 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 And so we would have these funny arguments out in the crowd because usually it was a dance-type party or something, and then and they would be saying, is that our cook? No, it can't be our cook. Yeah, it's our cook. Can and, I drink and your we, And we would just laugh about it. It was too funny. This one's a good one. 
This one's right. easier because it's got a point on it. Oh, okay. All right. Enough babbling. Anyway, it was a good and fun time. It was, it was crazy because it was such hard work that when we'd get home, we hurt so bad. We'd be 22 hours on our feet without blinking an eye when you did those kind of parties. Um, and then you'd have to get home. You'd have to haul everything home, and then you had to unload it. And we'd look at each other and just think, well, I hope we made a, some money or something here because it was crazy. This is like breathing. This is fun. This is like breathing. Um, I am going to show you now a barbecue sauce that I'm going to make. You'll see I got something in here already. I, I was babbling and doing at the same time. I've got some low sugar ketchup that I like to use in there. That's what I put in already. And I have some tomato paste here. Put some tomato paste in there. You can definitely make your own barbecue sauce. You can just go to the store and buy your own too. I, you know, whatever. You don't have to make your own. You can you can buy what you like. Now, I want to make this a smoky. You can make it sweet. You can make honey, teriyaki, all kinds of different ones. But I'm feeling like this needs to be a barbecue. So I'm going to make it kind of smoky. Now I need a little bit of Worcestershire sauce in there. How are you doing there? Awesome. Mr. Dicer Slicer. Good. Are we going to play a little guitar later on, too? Yeah, we can do that. No, I can. And you sing. <laughs> I could play guitar, but it might be, like, not really... This is um, a liquid smoke, and I put only a few drops in there. I also splashed all over my nice white apron. <laughs> now I look like a cook. Why would you want to do that? Uh, just because. And a little bit of that roasted garlic. Well, it just makes me look like I'm really cooking. I'm not just pretending, right? Mm. Okay, that's on good, and I'm just going to keep the barbecue down to an absolute low because I don't want those ribs to cook too much. So now you're just going to stir this mixture together, right? What else can I put in there? A little bit of pepper. A little bit of pepper. And just to give it a hint of sweet, I just always got one of the, <laughs> always got the maple syrup hanging around. How yes, do finely do you want them diced? Course, um, course? Kind of, like cut it again. Nope. And like like one more time down like that. Yeah, one more. And then twice. yeah, and then about four times. Okay, all right. Approximately. So I'm just going to put about a teaspoon of the maple syrup into that. You'd be surprised the combination of flavor that you get on this barbecue sauce. I'm also going to put just a little touch of oil. It's fun to make your own. Then I'm just going to set it aside while I'm preparing the other vegetables. I'm going to be putting them all into that bowl. And again, these little bit of mushrooms that I chopped up really fine, I'm going to throw them in there anyway because it'll all get lost in the wash. Flavor. Throw that in there. See, like that. I'm, going to, it's, I'm getting them to do them all separately, but once I have the rutabaga uh, cooked and that can go in there, then that just gets tossed and it only needs about 15 minutes on the barbecue max. So that's, again, not a, a real imposition. Okay, I'm just going to whip that all together. I need a little pepper more in there. Don't know if it needs salt. This one might need a touch of salt. This is where I have to taste. And you have a good taster. <laughs> what kind of look is that? I'm not sure. It's kind of tart. It needs something. Does it need maybe a little more? Oh, give me some of that white wine. That's the fun about when you're making your own things. You know, it's not really a recipe. I'll have to write it down so it becomes a recipe because you're all going to say, well, I want the recipe. And by the way, you can find uh, the recipes. I'm going to be having them on my website at www.sammyrosehollenberg.com. You'll find our music on there and my photography and the recipes. How fine you want the onion diced? I want that also in coarse, um, coarse. coarse chop. Yeah. So how many of you like ribs? That's what I want to know. I <laughs> There's very few people I have ever met that don't like ribs, uh, if they're done right. It's always a scary thing because you know how you like your ribs. And then when you go to a restaurant, you want to be careful. You just want it to be done. 
Okay, I'm going to cover this up because we are outside <coughs> and you never know. Well, actually, I have a lid, don't I? I can do that. Uh, I had a bowl. Here it is. That's why I like these. I like these, Jack, these containers because... Like, you want just, just in half? Is it big enough for you? Uh, I think it's... Oh, okay. That's plenty big. Do the next one in three, but I can use it. Just throw it in this bowl. And what was I going to say? There's some... Oh, I'm lost for words. Has that ever happened before? You didn't answer. <laughs> Are you lost for words? <laughs> oh, I still... I heard you <laughs> talking, so... <laughs> I figured there's no problem. You got it all under control. <laughs> No, I forgot what I was saying. No, it's okay. So where have we all done cooking? Oh, we never told the crazy story about where we really did cooking together. That was funny. Where was this? What? Which one? We finished Expo 86. We were playing Expo 86 in uh, Vancouver. We were there yeah. for six months, right? Then we came back to Edmonton, had the kids and everything. And then the, uh, the, the children stayed with us in the summertime, and then they... We're leaving, and we decided we were going up north to cook on the rigs. Oh, yeah, I remember, I remember that one. Yeah, that was cool. This was an experience. Yeah. Jack decided after three weeks he wasn't doing it anymore because his guitar playing fingers were wrinkly. From <laughs> doing dishes. And he left me there to do that. That was crazy. You enjoyed it. I did. <laughs> In one way. Okay, now what I want you to do what, is we're, like? we're going to combine put everything into this bowl. Okay. Now that we've seen what the it's... onion as well and yeah. the pepper and everything. Yeah, and then okay. I'm going to season everything. Okay. I'm going to put, uh, again, the avocado oil. And the shrooms. And the shrooms. It makes a big basket, but it's... You can make that, you know, for two people and you can have it in your fridge for days. It's just delicious. But basically what I'm making is a recipe for about oh, I 20 think. people. <laughs> no, because this is the vegetables and the potatoes all in one, right? So, like that. Are you going to go play us a tune? Uh, I could, yeah. Could you do that while I'm getting this prepared? Again, I'm using the avocado oil. I like that. The rutabagas are cooking. They'll get thrown in at the last minute. So I'm going to put about uh, think three tablespoons. You need, you need enough because you don't want them to be dry, and they're going to be in a basket with holes, so it's, it, it, it's possible that it's going to drip through. I need to get this. I need to have some of the seasoning over here. Actually, this is making you crazy, so I'm going to move over here. Making my cameraman dizzy, so I'm just going to sort of try to stand in one place for a little bit. Um, Jack's going to play another instrumental while I'm getting this all together. I'll stir it up after I get the seasoning. Mm -hmm. Rather than the whole garlic, because I'm afraid it won't get through it, I'm going to use again the roasted garlic. You, again, you can find that in a lot of your local grocery stores. You just have to look around. So sprinkle a little of the roasted garlic in there. I'm going to put the Herbes Provence. It's about a good teaspoon of that. I need a little bit of pepper. Not too much, because I don't want to take a risk of burning the pepper and turning it bitter. In this case, I do need a little bit of salt, but I'm going to use something called um, truffle sea salt. Truffle, you, everybody knows what truffle is. That's a wonderful exotic mushroom that they find in, uh, mostly in Germany and Switzerland and the Austria area. And they grow kind of under the roots of trees. And they have to have pigs actually to snout them out. Like they have to, they, they've got like pet, pet pigs, they're called truffle pigs. Seriously? And they go and they dig underneath the uh, roots and they come up with these big gnarly looking mushrooms. You see these tiny little black specks in here. That's only a little bit of it. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little of that in there. It gives it a nice flavor. I've also got a little bit of this fig balsamic. I'm just going to drizzle a little touch of that in there. Again, it just adds in essence. It's like adding vanilla to a cake. I also like a little of the rosemary because that grilling, not too much because it can get coarse. Wonderful flavors. 
Flavor, 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 important. But you see, it didn't take much to put this together. With some assistance, look how beautifully colorful it is. You know, um, like I said, I'm only gonna add one vegetable to it yet and it's over there cooking. So I'm gonna set this aside, I'm gonna cover it up. Check on my, my ribs just briefly. Just nice. Just nice. So, I think I got everything ready over here. And the idea of having a barbecue like this where I'm not doing a tremendous a lot of things is it allows time to spend time with your guests again. And that's kind of what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go sing a song. That's what I'm going to do right now while everything is just doing its thing. But I remember last time I left this, it boiled over, so I'm turning it down. So I'm just going to go over to the other corner because I think everything's under control here. I don't have to do anything with the ribs until the last 10 minutes. They're just going to sit like that, and then I'm going to take them and lay them out, and baste them with the barbecue sauce, and they will fall apart, and they will taste good. Jack, are you ready? Seriously? I want to mention this. We, um, we do let ourselves be available in case you want to get us to come and make a barbecue party for you, or we can play the music, we can do the cooking, you do the dishes. Or we do so, both. Perfect. That's what I am. But we don't do dishes, right? No. Okay. We don't do yeah. dishes. Jack, what, Jack doesn't want to hurt his guitar playing fingers. No, no dishes. Here's one of the songs off the brand new album, Life's Kaleidoscope. Because we've been doing stuff together for a long time and heck, we still like each other. I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Here's a song called Us. When I saw you for the first time First time.
man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, the drummer, the drummer. Stop the drummer. <laughs> I'm going to go back and see what I'm doing over there in my corner of the world. And Jack, if you feel like it, you can pick up another tune and I'll go see what I can do with the veggies. I think it's time to get them on. Yep. Yeah. Smells like that's cooked. Actually, that's a good tune. I'll do a little uh, Golandrina. There you go. I like messing around with flavors. vegetables in but it's a tray that has holes so I'm going to need to have the cookie sheet underneath I've already taken the ribs off as well because they got to rest now before I put them onto the grill so I've turned the grill up to high for now I'm gonna shut the rutabagas off I can just rest this on top of this I won't hurt the meat uh, look and where I oh here it is it's bright red I Try to do that so I can find it. <laughs> Just gonna drain off the vegetables. Again, it's kind of handy when you're in the garden because you can just drain off your vegetables right there. I'm gonna add, see I've got the rutabagas just parboiled like that because otherwise they'd be so tough. They would ruin the whole dish. So I'm going to put them in as well to mix in there. Thanks, Jack. That was awesome. I'll sing another song when I got time. But first, I got to get the vegetables going. Don't think I want to put all of these in here. The thing is that rutabagas are a little bit on the bitter side compared to the sweetness of the carrots and the onions. But that's a good thing because it will be a, a good counterbalance. So I just got to stir it in, though, so that. And this seems like an awful lot. But the peppers, the onions, all of those kind of vegetables shrink down. And there's nothing like serving a great big colorful basket of these vegetables. It's so healthy, again, grilling is actually a healthy kind of cooking. So now I'm just gonna pour it all into the basket like this because it's got the oils, the herbs, it's got everything in it. Look at that for color. It's a Picasso. <laughs> now I'm going to get that on the flame, like that, on high for now, because I want that to start smoldering and smoking. I'm going to move this. I'm going to get my trusty assistant to come and kind of get rid of some of our, our mess here. Thanks, Jack. 
For you welcome. You know, mostly I'm his assistant. Because like whenever like I should explain that whenever we're building or doing what we do here, Jack's the builder. He's electrician too. So yes, you're a master of a few trades, to say the least. And uh, then when when we bought this place, we moved here from Alberta. We had we had family here. And so we said, okay, let's let's go there. We bought a different property further down. And I made my business there, which was a wellness business for eight years. But I've decided to go back to my real passion and my love, and that's cooking. And here I am. And I want to give people some cooking lessons. I want to go around to people's places and if they want us to have their parties for cooking and for music. And that's kind of what we're, what we're trying to do. But anyways, when we bought the place, uh, it was just, what was it, Jack? 470 or 520 square feet oh, or something? Oh, 700 square feet. Really? Oh, no, 500. Yeah, yeah. 500. Right. Wow. Five, 550 or Okay, so. I was going to say, <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got me thinking there for a second. <laughs> anyway, we had tubs to the ceiling because we came from a big place in Okotoks. And I thought, oh, what on earth did we do? And it was just the tiniest little place, but the property was beautiful. The price was right. And the town was awesome. And we thought, well... You know, time for new beginnings. Well, he proceeded to build one tiny little deck on the one side because the door just dropped off to the ground. And he built the porch on because the door just stepped right into the kitchen. And we were just going to stay here while we were going to fix up the other property. I have no idea what part of building around ourselves we didn't get. But we still liked each other, even after we did all that. So that was pretty hilarious. We got her done, and here we are. This was the second deck, and a whole piece built onto the building, another whole piece built onto the building. So we've built it around us, and he's built his own electrical company, which is Prairie Tech Electric, and they've got a little shop over on the side, and that's where they work out of. So we've got a whole complex going on, because over in the other corner is um, a recording studio and a garage where he does woodwork. Yeah, we're just... And he does also luthier work, like he builds guitars and fixes guitars. He's in the middle of fixing a guitar right now for his cousin, who's coming to visit all the way from Holland. Now, I'm just going to move one rack over to the side because I want to open this up to show you the pre-cook on the rack. It doesn't fall apart. But you see, there's no color to it yet or anything, but it's juicy. It's been cooking. It's tender. Can you see it? So I'm going to let it just chill down a little. I'm going to, I need a fork. Oh, I guess, I don't want to poke it because you shouldn't really. Although when it's cooked like that, it's okay. But that's just about ready to be put on, on to the cue. I'm going to first let this go. I got to give it a, if you can see what's going on here, just give it a little scoop because I don't want it to burn on the bottom. But I want it to get a little bit of a grill mark to it. That's ah, just getting started. It's a full basket. Can't wait to sink my teeth into that one. Look at the rib. It's looking pretty nice. Hey? Eh? Yeah, they look awesome. And now you've got your barbecue. I'm going to grill them pretty soon, but I can't until You're after the. Oh, yeah, right. That's a fancier turtle. Oh yeah, we're barbecuing today, not grilling, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, I was just telling everybody in listening land that um, what we all did to this place, that's for sure. And I remember when we were building the studio, that was funny because I, w we didn't have helpers and you and I lifted the walls, like just. Well, we put the whole building up, yeah, the only thing. Our local contractor helped me with the roof structure because he had a l loader thing. Yeah, yeah. And other than that, we built the whole thing ourselves. But the funny part is we're not builders. No. So it was kind of funny. But what, what Jack can tell you about, what he used to do before, well, how many years ago already? Before the whole us time. <laughs> before us. Before us. Before us, there was then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then and, time. And, and then I used to build log buildings. Yeah. And, and do you need those still? Uh, no, but I wanted you to tell our people in listening land what oh, you did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I used to build log homes. I got into that because we had a, an acreage and we couldn't afford to build a house on it. So a friend of mine who was a logging truck driver says, 
Hey man, he says, I can get you a bunch of logs. Why don't you build a log house? So I found a local old timer who used to build log houses and he showed me what to do and how to do it. And I ended up building oh, over a dozen log homes. And what area was that? And that was up in Northern BC in the Bulkley Valley region. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah, I spent quite a few years, about 15 so years doing log building. and Until you realized that chainsaw was killing your guitar playing uh, hands. That too, and also I thought electrical <laughs> work was much easier. And that's what I am from yeah. as of young, because I used to train as for an electrician when mm -hmm. I was 16 or 15. Yeah. Or you were in Holland, right? I was in Holland still, yeah. yeah. I came to Canada when I was 19. Mm -hmm. Got rid of the wooden shoes? Got rid of, no, we've still got a pair of wooden shoes here. <laughs> that's for sure. Just a souvenir. <laughs> If you don't mind, you can take in a I'll few I'll bring this through the kitchen. Yeah, just leave that other I'll rack. I'll be back, maybe. All right. So, yeah, it's fun for us to, to talk a little bit about <laughs> what we're about, I guess. And it's, it's great to know that we still have the want to do a lot of things and that we enjoy our time together playing music. I write and come up with all kinds of stories and stuff, but without him, well, I don't think the songs would really come to the right because I can play three or four chords on a guitar and uh, probably about five chords on a ukulele and I don't think that would kind of get the CD done to where it has to be. And we've done seven CDs. Um, we recorded one that is kind of Latin Spanish. So we're going to do one of those songs here before too long. There was a reason and a method behind that. And when I'm grilling, I think about it. Um, we were in... Uh, Cali, Colombia, we were asked to do a mission there. And we weren't going to do it. We were living in Okotoks and we had gone to, it's a, a long story, but I've cooked all over the place. So I got hired in Costa Rica to cook for a birthday party and to sing for it. And all the expenses were paid and we had a great time. And we said, well, why not? And then we met a missionary there who was getting a little break and he was from Cali, Colombia. He said, could you come to play at our cultural mission? in Cali, Colombia. And I said, well, I don't know, what's that about? He says, well, we want to teach the children because they're never going to get out of their situation. We want them to see some other culture of music. And as it was, everybody volunteered, the people volunteered there to help these children to do, to teach them song, dance, theater. And so, yeah. And uh, so I want you to come because we're going to play the streets of Cali before too long here. Anyway, the long story short is these people had nothing. And they would give us the shirt off their backs and more. And they took us all out to the country because they were teaching the children how to love and live off the land. And that meant, you know, being able to cook and grow things and do what you had to do. And they were so proud of having us there as their special guests. I have no idea how they could afford it or what they did, but they went and had beef for us, beef barbecue with vegetables and everything. I have no idea how they could do that, but they were so very, very proud of it. And there was a fellow there too who, who donated and really made sure that a lot of things happened. He was from Switzerland, his name was John and they give Jack and him the biggest peef pieces of the beef, which was really amazing. The only thing was, the meat was, if you saw the cows in the pasture, you would understand. They were the most gaunt, skinny, poor beasts that you've ever seen. And they were, like I said, so proud of this beef, and they prepared this beef for us. And Jack couldn't chew it, and we didn't know what to do because you couldn't insult them. So John and him were sitting there just putting things in tiny strips and eating the beef. And they were so proud and smiling. I was being a cook and a chef. I came to the barbecue and I saw a small piece and it was a little thicker and, and I thought, can I have that one please? And so mine was actually quite nice. Pretty crazy thing to have to tell you. But before I get onto the grilling of the meat, we're gonna sing a song that when we came back from street from Cali, it so struck me. It's really the reason we moved out here, isn't it, Jack? Yeah. Yeah. We we said we don't need all this. We were in a city, a rat race, you chase yourself around. 
a cog in the wheel, so to speak, and we said we need to live in a simpler way because they made us realize that we don't need so much. We can build around ourselves and we can make life really fun and a lot simpler. So this song came out of it. I just got to turn down the barbecue before I go there because I don't want a, a disaster on my hands. And also, I'm going to be putting the meat on there. How much time? Okay. I got time for a song and I got time to grill the meat. I'm going to sing a little Spanish too. Oh boy. Getting outlandish on me. But I'll do it in English first so you know what I'm saying in Spanish. This is off of this album. It was a sultry night, a midnight flight. We set foot on the streets of Cali. Well, I got to get back over there to make sure I'm not burning anything. So while I'm going over to get the ribs onto the grill, can you play us another tune, Jack? I can do that. Something that just reminds us of our Costa Rican trip. No, not Costa Rican. Well, Costa Rica, but also Cali. Okay. 
This looks great, I tell you. So now I'm going to move it to the top. See, it's ready. Just a nice bit of char on the veggies. Beautiful, smoky. Can you see? Beautiful. I'm going to put it up there. And now I'm going to put the ribs, the whole rack like that. First, the flesh up like this. On. Doesn't take long because the meat is cooked quite well already. But I'm going to close it. Oh, I better turn this. I don't want it to spill. And this doesn't take long because you don't want to burn them. So you put it on medium heat like that. And I made the barbecue sauce, if you remember, right over here. I'm also going to do a little drizzle of the oil and this on top of the vegetables when they come out. While I'm just waiting, I'm going to just wrap up the foil. Because that's going to be the pan I use. Hope you're getting hungry for ribs. Are you getting hungry for ribs? Because they're going to be to die for. <laughs> makes me, makes me want to dance. So this is the barbecue sauce. Now you're not going to baste the barbecue sauce on the underside, but you are going to put it on this side. I hear it crackling. It's nice to have the tools handy. Whoa, can tell we're outside. That was uh, a big old truck going by. You might see on the meat right now, you can still see all the herbs. Really nice. So in order to get a really tender rib, that's the best way. You pre-cook it, let it savor in all its juices and all the herbs that you put on it. Now, I'm going to be turning that over in a bit. Just not yet. Because all you do is you turn it over briefly so that the barbecue sauce can cook and then you take it out. It's as simple as can be. I can plate it and show you what to do, but it's just a sensible, how much rib do you want and how much vegetable do you want? It just looks really nice. Thank you, Jack. So you notice how much time I had in between to just sit and talk and visit and have a good time with everybody because that's what a barbecue or a grill season is all about. I think the next time we'll just have to crack a beer and or, and or have a wine or maybe a cider or something because and then you and I have to honker down to it but I want a taste of these ribs right smartly. Maybe you want to come and sample it with me too when I when I take them off. After all you were my trusty assistant. Let's see if they if they're as tender as they're supposed to be. There I just turned it over. I'm going to take the vegetables out of here. Don't want to leave it too, too long on that side because I don't want it to burn. Maybe we could run, Jack, and get me another cookie sheet. Please. Something to put it on. So I'm just going to set this here. Look at that. Now, just to finish that off, just because it gives it a bit of a shine, and you don't want to add butter because that's not really healthy, but this is healthy. But it gives you a nice shine. It's so, like, picturesque cover this up because I don't want flies and just for a touch of sweet a little bit of that too and I'm going to scoop it around right now I'm going to flip this over immediately because I don't want it to burn mm -hmm. so almost ready seems funny you wouldn't think it'd be done that fast but that's what it takes just like that almost just going to give him one more little blurp like that set it to the side here thank you my trusty assistant I'm <laughs> just going to scoop this up. Look at this. Woohoo! Then I'm going to put it sideways so that I can take the ribs off of the... 
and then I'm going to show you how tender it is. I want to thank everybody for coming out, hanging out, tuning in to access, and enjoying. I want you to get all these recipes off my website. Enjoy trying to cook them. Get out there grilling with your friends because you know what? Grilling season is really short. And you want to enjoy every second of it. I want you to see the finished product here. Actually, I'm going to switch that over. Where's my pot holder? I need my pot holder. Thank you, thank you. Now, we got to cut into that really quickly. Jack, you want to have a taste? Is there a fork here? Is there a fork here? No, we're in the I'm just going to use my fingers. It'll look better on that one, on this one, and this one. And then actually put it onto the board like that. How are we doing? Are we ready to taste this? I've got to use a sharp knife because otherwise it'll tear and that won't be pretty. So watch this. I'm going to cut in like that. Oh, it's tender. Oh, it's tender. So in order to plate, you do this. Jack, you want to take a piece and try it? I will definitely do that. And scoop this on here. I can't wait for you to come back and see what we're making next week. We'll uh, be back. It falls off the bone. That's already a good sign. Okay. Good Let's have a bite. Let's have a bite. I want to have a bite. It's hot. Be careful. Yeah, it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot. Look. <coughs> Ribs with a fork? Well, it just falls off the bone. <laughs> Look at this. He's eating ribs with a fork. You're European. Never mind. They eat hamburgers there with fork and knife. I couldn't get over it. Pizza with fork and knife. Mmm. Very good. Okay, I'll do the Canadian way. I'm going to put this on your plate because I have a plate. Mm. But they're very delicious. Again, thank you everybody for coming, hanging out, and looking forward to seeing you next week. Till then. Happy cooking, Happy holidays. love the life you live, and keep on keeping on.